Hi guys, it's Tim from Advanced In Car Technologies and following on from our other video of the the comfort dash. This more, this one is a bit more involved. It's gonna take a little bit more time to film and for you guys to watch, but hopefully it should allow you to purchase the equipment from us. Uh, we can deliver it out and then you fit it yourself with the aid of this video. So we are starting off with a 2016 66 plate VW Transporter T6, and it's currently got the standard dashboard. Um, it's the non-comfort, which basically means it's just got the gear shift and a couple of pockets over there on the left-hand side. And we're going to show you sort of step-by-step, step, but not getting too involved. We'll let you uh, use a bit of brain power to try and work it out, but how to go through the whole process of fitting this comfort dashboard uh, bit by bit, as I said, so that you get the finished article that you'll see at the end of the video. Okay, so Richard has pretty much disassembled the whole dash and he's going to very quickly run through the process, what he's done. Um, we've removed all the screws, but he's going to highlight where the screws are in the vehicle, just so you know, but he's not going to spend hours unscrewing them all. So Richard's going to jump in right now. He's going to talk us through a few of the bits and then we're going to, we're going to roll from there. So first off, you need a T20, a little flathead, a trim tool, and then a magnet is also very useful. And then it's also useful just to have a tray to stick all your screws and see if you lose them. So we've got to get the glove box out first. So we're going to pop this end trim off. You're just going to do that with a trim tool and that will pop out. You'll then undo the two screws at the bottom underneath the glove box at each end. And the four screws that go along the top. Once you've got all those out, you'll then just unhook the side here and wiggle it down. And out comes the glove box. What you'll then have is you'll have a screw here for the centre console, a screw here, and then there's one right at the back down there as well. And then behind this fuse panel cover just here, you've got one on the indentation that's in there, and this will be the same when we fit the new comfort dash. We'll replace all those. So over on the driver's side, again, same as before, take the end panel off, and then to remove the light switch, you push the button in, twist it up to the top, and then slide the whole unit out. Put the plug on the back, and then inside the light switch, you'll have a T20 just here. So you'll undo that, then with your little flat head, you've got two little clips that are up in the top. Put your flat head in on the angle, just to, if I can find it, there you go, just to pull one down, Pop your finger in, give it a healthy pull, and out it comes. And what you're doing is you're hooking down these two, or at least one of these little two tabs, to allow it to come out. Once you've done that, you can then go along and gradually release the panel and bring it all down. You've got two pinch tabs on the side of here to release those, and that's that panel out. And again, that then reveals your mounting screws to the center console on the other side here here sometimes there's one down at the back there but on this model like, like, like most there isn't one so now we're in the middle we're going to very carefully you've got to remove or lift up the gear stick gator so you'll very carefully work your way around the edge just being very careful because this this plastic's really really brittle and is quite happy to break so once you've got that released, it will just pop up and it can just slide up. And all you're doing is just releasing these clips that are all around the edges. You can then slide that up out of the way. And we're then going to then release this one. And this one pops up. And it's behind here that we have one last screw that's located up in this section just here. So you'll get your T20 driver. You'll unscrew it most of the way. And then it's very useful just to have a, a small magnet just to be able to get in there and get that screw because obviously it's a pain if it drops down into this lot here. Once you've got all those screws out, you're then ready to remove this center console. So once I've released this, I've then carefully just wiggled it, this section of the gear gator through this larger hole. So that's then separate. Then just before I unplugged the uh, the plug for the display here, which is this one. I just put the ignition on quickly and put the gear stick into neutral and then turn everything off again. So now I've got a bit more room to be able to um, lift the center console up and over. So now you've got everything 
unscrewed and it's all released you can then just give everything a bit of a wiggle and you'll find that it's all nice and loose as one big unit once you pull it towards you you'll have your cigarette lighter plug tucked in the back here so you just pull the foam back and release that and then you're good to go to very carefully watching out for the gator again slide the center console up and over the top and then we're good to go with reversing the procedure but with the new comfort dash so next stage is to route the piping for the cooling system of the bottle um, holder and also we've got the longer one which comes off and then connects in to cool the um, glove box as well from just here uh, the only other thing you'll need for your glove box is the same a uh, little twisting um, plate that connects into this section of the glove box just here. So to get into where the pipes connect up you need to remove this fascia around the head unit, uh, this vent here so you can then gain access to this pocket. So using your trim tool you'll work around through the bottom here gradually clipping everything off up this side and along the top and then this piece of trim will gradually work its way off. Now if you've got a 12 volt socket up here you'll find that the top edge of this vent might just catch up on the bottom of it so you just gradually wiggle it out and out it will come like that. Then removing the left hand vent it's the same really you just work along the bottom edge and up the sides and gradually it will kind of angle itself up and pop off and come out like this. Now this pocket is, um, it has one screw up underneath, which is a little T20 up on the metal bar um, just up here. So you undo that screw and then everything else, it's just fully held in very well with very strong clips. So using two trim tools, I tend to go in at the side here first because you'd have two plastic clips here at each end. I tend to go in at the side and underneath and work up this side and this bottom edge so you can then gradually release this bottom edge first and then you very carefully without denting the top work along the top with your trim tool to then pull it out. Now the type of clips you're working with are these large plastic ones here and these metal ones which locate up into these tiny little holes here. So you've got a lot of clips that you're fighting against but it does come out you've just got to add a bit of patience and uh, just be confident with it. So once you've um, got all these panels out and you're good to go, you then have access to the airbox just here. Now, at the back edge of the airbox, if you lift up the foam, when you poke your hand in at a diagonal and then drop your fingers down behind it, you will feel a little round grommet. Now this is where this T section of the pipe will connect into. Um, so I've already got my grommet out. It's just a nice little simple plastic grommet so you know what you're looking for um, and you'll see that it has exactly the same kind of hooked beveled edge so you can see that where this is going to be connecting into. Now what we've done is um, not only we've we got the obviously the pipe coming off for the bottle cooler we went for the extended pipe that has the cooling for the glove box as well so that then our customer can you know, call chocolate bars and things like that. Um, so because this is quite a you know, quite a fiddly area to work in and there's not a lot of view for the camera I'm just going to explain the routing that you're going to end up with and then um, and then I'll go away and get it all fitted in and so when we come back to fitting all the um, the bottle cooling in you'll then be able to see where I've ended up with my pipes so where the grommet is at the back of the airbox over here the this T section will kind of clip into it and you'll be that angle within the dash. This pipe is then going to route over the airbox and drop down onto the hose fixing we saw a second ago which will be on top going into the back of the glove box just here. So that's this really nicely kind of made off section here. So that will route down through and you'll just slide it nicely home onto that. And then this shorter pipe here will then route down underneath the back of this vent here and then you'll end up coming down through this metal work about here for when the uh, the vent 
for the bottle cooler goes on and this end of the pipe will just slide onto the end of it. So in the end, if you were to see into the dashboard, your pipe work would effectively be routing like that. All right. Right, so I've got my pipe work in. Uh, it's really fiddly job. You've just got to you just got to be patient with it and not lose your temper, basically. Um, your where the T section goes up into the grommet here, you just have to kind of feel around with your hands. If you can get both hands in, so one over the top, the second one down, maybe in this tiny gap here. Uh, if you can do that and kind of feel it working its way in, it will eventually just you'll feel it pop in and it goes, and then it's in there and it's sorted. Then it's a case of routing the, uh, if, you, if you're doing your glove box vent, then you route the, the left hand side over and it comes right over and then just connects down onto this section just here. Fits really nicely and then that's the glove box cooling area uh, sorted. Then the other hose coming down for the bottle cooler, I routed down the back of all of this. I kind of poked my hand in where I could and, and then fed it down from the top. It then comes across and then connects onto the bottle cooling pipe here, um, which uh, which then gets just clipped into place. It's got a standard mounting point just here. Um, I found it was easiest to bring the hose through the very tight little gap that's just here, um, so I could then connect the pipe work onto the hose with a bit of silicon spray, and then just gradually push it all the way back up. It's again, it's fiddly, it's tight. But once it goes in, you then go, yeah, no, that's fine. It's meant to fit there, and that's not a problem at all. And now it's, uh, it's all ready to go for the centre console to come in. Right, so these are the bits that we're, um, we've are we either taken out of the van so far, that are the standard bits, or the and then the new bits that are going in. So this is the standard centre console that we've got with the um, the small aperture for the uh, gear stick and gator and everything there. We've got a little cubby hole. This is where the 12-volt socket would have been. You've got a little pocket, and, uh, and then just the cover plate for where the fuse box is. Um, is so you can see obviously you've probably got your own you know what that looks like this is the difference between the comfort dash and the uh, standard dash so you can just see it's got a much larger area on top where um, <coughs> the full panel goes across the top where you have your pocket and your gear stick gate on this side you then have this area here where your cup holder goes in and then down the bottom you've then got the bottle holder as well so which is then removable so you can still get to your fuse board that's out the back there this is then the drinks holder that goes in that top section so it's got all these little uh, all these little cover panels and everything in little storage pocket there just clips in and then gets screwed into place and this is the bottle holder that goes down the bottom pops open it's a nice little bit of kit slides in and then what it has on the back here is it has a little vent which the uh, which a hose that we fitted with um, some pipe work comes down onto the back of it and then that produces the cooling effect so it cools whatever's in there basically um, we've gone for the longer pipe which goes from the bottle area up and over to the uh, glove box so you can also have a cooled glove box as well and then to finish off this is the uh, the top panel with your uh, with your pocket and the gear stick gator, this is the difference in size. So you can see you get quite a substantial storage area, and that's where your 12 volt socket goes. Right. So to get the centered console in, because of the bottle holder section, um, you now have to deal with this area here because the bottle holder comes right back and sits down in here. So you have to cut away a little bit of the foam and quite a lot of the hard plastic that's behind here. So to give you an idea of how much I actually had to cut out, it kind of it kind of goes together as a, a whole piece like that. So it's a good few inches all the way around. The reason it's in, in, a, in a few sections is because what I like to do is I like to test fit something uh, and then remove a decent amount of material and then test fit again and just take your time with it. Don't rush it because otherwise if you just go in gung-ho and, and chop out a massive section, you might then find, oh, I've got a big old gap or it doesn't fit properly or you've hacked in something you shouldn't have done. So it's always best to, you know, you can see I took out a section this big to start off with because it was, it was clearly obvious I needed to take out a decent amount. And then I just went along trimming out extra little bits here and there 
until I got it to slide in really nicely and it not affect the operation of the bottle cage, um, and uh, which is what I've done. And then just to, because of where this rubber also comes up, you know, this section of rubber, um, what happens is when the bottle cage comes in, obviously you've removed the, plastic, the hard plastic, but then because this then has to fold, it would have to fold over, um, it then actually causes, causes an obstruction and doesn't allow it to fit in properly. So I also cut that section out and put a little slit here, which allows it just to fold down ever so slightly and uh, it all now goes in a little treat. So we're ready for kind of like a final fit almost really. Um, so I've got, the, I've got the gear stick in neutral. And I'm just gonna very carefully lift the center console over everything. And then you line up your sides, line up the bottle cage area, and just slide it into place really. And then you can see that once you get to this stage, you've kind of passed the halfway mark, and you're well on your way to your, your, T, your T6 having a comfort dash. So there we go, that's that side clipped in. Give it a little wiggle on this side. But you can see that that now is going to go in a treat, and I'll just be able to start rebuilding the car. So this centre section now is all screwed in. Uh, I picked up my side points and down at the bottom down here, either side, like with the original piece, and I've also picked up this point here. The only extra uh, one you have is this one just here. Um, so originally when you took your, your old uh, centre console out, you wouldn't have removed this one, but we're now fitting this one. Um, and then I've also picked up this lower one that goes in behind the bottle uh, holder just there. So as you can see, it's all in and fixed in place now. Right, next bit is the bottle holder. So the bottle holder doesn't have any screw fixings to hold it in place. It just locates itself in and clicks in. When you come to remove it, if at any point you want to get to your fuses, just inside, you might be able to see, are two little thumb pinchers that you squeeze and they release these two side clips on the back here. So as you squeeze them, they just pinch in ever so slightly and allow it to rock forward out of its housing. So I'm just gonna loosely put that in for the moment. It can be a little fiddly at times, but you can see that's gonna kinda of go in that way and sit in there. Now what we have to do is before this can just be clipped in, the drinks holder needs to go in and be screwed in. Now the drinks holder is gonna pick up on four fixing points for screws. You've got these two top ones here, which will be going into these two just here. And then you've got these two lower ones here and here, which will be picking up this point and this point here. So you can lift up your 12 volt plug, slide this drawer in, and then that will just locate itself in, picking up the little lug at the bottom there. And then that's gonna go in and I'm gonna screw in those fixing points. If I just hold it, you can then see you've then got your drinks tray. Following on from the drinks tray, the bottle holder, we've then got the top section, which takes in your gear gator and then also picks up one fixing point, which is in the back of this. So you need to either possibly get a longer T20 bit, or if you can get your hand in there, you might be able to still get it done up. And that's going to go onto this fixing point that's up here that you might just be able to see. So we're going to feed everything through nice and gently, finding its root. There we go. We're going to make sure our 12 volt socket is plugged in. And then we're going to just gently, very careful everything, because obviously this is a real easily scratched piece of kit. We're just going to wiggle it into place. And then as you then push it down home, it locates in its all its little fixing plates and its clips, and then it's just pushed home, clipped into place. And then you'll push your gated base down, clip that into it, and that'll be that built and all in and finished. So once you're happy that you've finished all your center console section, which is the bit you're mainly changing, you can then go about refitting your side panel, doing the reverse of what you did when you removed it, and then refitting the glove box, doing exactly the same as you did when you uh, when you removed it. And then if you haven't already put all this section back together, you can do exactly the reverse of what you did. You're gonna put your, uh, your cubby hole back in here, and then your vents all back in. 
and your van will be done and fitted out with a uh, with a comfort dash. Now, just one last thing before um, before I get on and just rebuild this van is because we fitted the longer hose for the glove box cooling as well. We have fitted <coughs> the the little adjustable vent that goes in the back of the glove box just here. It's exactly the same as the one that goes in the bottle holder. Um, it's just the uh, it's the same part and everything. And it just you cut out the little section on the back just here, and you end up clipping it in. That then just marries up with the uh, with the cooling section just here. So I'm going to go away now and rebuild the van. When you next see it, it will all be finished with its comfort dash. Right, so it's all finished. Comfort dash is all in, everything's put back together. So we now have a little storage pocket here with your 12 volt socket, and if you do choose to have a USB, you have a little USB in there. We've then got little cup holders just here with extra little cubby spaces for bits and bobs. And then we have our nicely air-cooled bottle holder, which is also your entry point to your fuse board. And then as I stated before, because we went above and beyond with this one, um, we've also fitted the air-cooled section for the glove box as well. So if you've got your chocky bars and stuff, they stay cooled. So as you can see, it just it's a really nice feature for a van to have. And, um, and if you're into tinkering with your cars yourself, it's a really rewarding little project to get stuck into over a weekend because it makes a big nice change to your car. Um, but then on the flip side, obviously, if you don't fancy taking your own car apart and you'd like us to do it, just get in touch either on the website, give us a buzz, and, uh, and we'll sort something out for you. Cheers for watching.